In this week's feature story, we meet a gentleman whose passion for trees is unmistakable. Many children in the Oxford, Mississippi area got their first introduction to what tree farming is all about thanks to the school tours that John Archea hosted on his property for 25 years. John continues to be a strong advocate for forestry and always has time to show a visitor to his farm what it means to be a good steward of the land. In October, John Archea was named the present Outstanding Tree Farmer of the Year by the Mississippi Forestry Association. This story first aired last fall. This sign marks the turnoff for Springwood Christmas Tree Farm, John Arachea's tree farm south of Oxford, Mississippi. What are now open areas on this beautiful place used to be covered in Christmas trees, lots of Christmas trees, seven acres worth, in fact. Christmas trees were the first main enterprise of this farm. From 1985 to 2010, John Arachea had school groups out here each year. He taught them about what it takes to produce Christmas trees and about how to take care of the land. This was a highlight of my year when the children, uh, even pre-kindergarten and kindergarten came out in the July and August, September, hot out here. But I know, I knew that the children were gonna be coming and they'd bring the school buses in and uh, sometimes with as many as 60 children in one group. So, but I, I enjoyed that. Each November and December for 25 years, John Arachea used his tree farm as a demonstration area to educate young people about forestry. During this time, he figures he sold well over 4,000 Christmas trees. Also during these years, John's wife, Lois, operated a related business each holiday season. She made wreaths and garland from all the cull trees in a workshop in this house on the farm. Although the tours for children ended in 2010 and Christmas tree sales are now limited to stock he buys wholesale and brings in, John is still always more than happy to take a walk on his property with visitors or friends and talk about his tree farm. The thing that, that kind of impresses me is, is with 120 acres, he's got a wide variety of habitat. I mean, he's got some bottomland hardwood, he's got some uh, upland old growth, uh, you know, area where he's, he's done the, the Christmas tree farm that he's gradually converting over to pine. Uh, and then the pine plantation areas, uh, it's, it's just amazing the, the variety of habitat he has here. This ridge on the farm was converted from Christmas trees to loblolly pine production in 2007. John Arachea personally planted 1,000 seedlings as a reforestation project. This area here at one time for a number of years was in different Christmas trees, probably improved variety of Virginia pine. And so as time went on, my wife tells me I need to slow up a little bit. Uh, so this was just open field for a while after the last Christmas trees were, were harvested. Anyway, and so I went ahead and, and planted this area in uh, Loblolly. <coughs> So this is a stand, I'm real proud of it. Adjacent to the young trees is a stand of 21-year-old loblolly. Forestry consultant Bill Canale worked with John Arachea on a harvest operation on this part of the tree farm in 2008. A first thinning was conducted on 66 acres of loblolly. I actually found a, a quality uh, uh, thinning crew from, from Bruce, Mississippi. To, we negotiated with them and, and, and conducted a basically a fifth row system, fairly light thinning, uh, but it's a beautiful stand of high quality genetics, uh, pole quality material, and uh, John said it was planted with International Paper Company stock, and uh, certainly left enough volume to come back and do a second cut within the next few years. There has also been other forest management work in addition to harvesting and reforestation on this tree farm in the last five years. Other practices have included the rehabilitation of existing fire lanes in 2008, as well as the installation of new ones. Uh, so we come in and of course uh, put water bars and turn out ditches on the existing fire lanes, uh, put in new ones and we uh, covered it with uh, some uh, air relief clover, and some common Bermuda. Uh, and it's, it's held really well, uh, you know, we don't see much erosion. And he's also got some native grasses coming back on it as well. Uh, he's got some common Lespedeza uh, for wildlife. Uh, so he was just, he was looking at uh, three things really with the fire lanes. One, fire control, 
uh, some wildlife habitat, and then uh, some good uh, areas that he can get around the property and, and keep an eye on it. John Arachea's most recent forest management work on the tree farm was performing a QVM spray in 2011, working through his consultant and his service forester with the Mississippi Forestry Commission, John obtained cost share funding for an aerial application to control both woody and herbaceous species of vegetation in the pine plantation. A controlled burn is scheduled to take place in the winter of 2013. John Arche is uh, just a prime example of what we like to see in a forest landowner. Um, he manages his tree farm on a sustainable basis. He has a diversity of crops in his business. Uh, he's got the traditional forestry going on. He does thinning and regeneration, uh, but he also does his little Christmas tree, uh, Christmas tree farm sales. Unlike some tree farmers, forestry is more than just a hobby for John Arachea. He is college trained in this field and was a forester with the U.S. Forest Service until his retirement in 1987. John has had a written forest management plan for his property since the day he bought it 42 years ago. A landowner's objectives can vary and depending on what, what they want to do, they can either uh, manage for economic uh, gain or they can have multi-purpose management. Uh, John manages multi-purpose. Uh, he is a big advocate for, for wildlife. Uh, he also had the, the, has the Christmas tree farm here. Uh, so he has uh, income producing opportunity as well as, as beneficial enjoyment. But probably the most impressive thing that, that really stood out to me was what Mr. John and Miss Lewis do for the community in promoting forestry and the tree farm program. He's held a position on the Oxford Tree Board, uh, served as the chair on that board, uh, and he's, he's uh, helped uh, found a nature trail which was actually named after him here in the community. Perhaps most importantly, John Arachea is responsible for helping organize the Lafayette County Forestry Association 20 years ago. John is now the editor of the Lafayette CFA newsletter and serves on the board as treasurer. He has been a member of the Mississippi Forestry Association since 1965 and the Society of American Foresters since 1967. From Oxford, Mississippi, I'm Leighton Spann reporting. You can watch this story on John Arachea again on the Farm Week website, Facebook page, or on YouTube. That website address is farmweek.msucares.com. We'll also have links there and some contact information for the agencies where you can get further forestry advice if you want to start and manage your own tree farm. An artist, I talked to uh, John and Lois, and uh, he did get that uh, control burn in that he talked about uh, last month in March. He did burn that 66 acres. And as soon as the weather gets a little better, he's planning to uh, put out some clover and grasses on those fire lanes. Tell you what, just a great tree farm and just, you know, the land is uh, fairly steep in places and it just holds the erosion in an excellent place and he's willing to share that information with other people. He is.